Thanks for joining me on this beautiful sunny day. Um, super pumped today to welcome as our guest one of our beloved and longest running school partnerships. Um, I've got a wonderful panel from Taminen Middle School. There's everybody. Hey guys, how you doing? Great. 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 Awesome. We're welcoming um, John Heisey, Emily Murray, and Jeff Klein. <laughs> guys, some of the masterminds behind our partnership really over the years. So really welcome and thanks for joining us. I know this is your first week back five days a week live, which is amazing. It means we're really moving in the right direction. And that excites me because we miss being able to see you guys. So welcome. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. You bet, you bet. So Jeff, I'm gonna kind of um, let you set the stage. We're talking two decades, partnering with the Kellyanne Dolan Memorial Fund. Take us back. How did it all start? So our partnership with the fund started in 2001. Uh, we had a staff member here who was uh, connected to uh, the Dolan family, friend of the Dolan family who also worked here. And uh, they got together to start a three-on-three -three basketball tournament. Um, and it's kind of grown from there and, and uh, involves all kinds of different uh, groups of kids within our building, whether it's kids who play, uh, kids who come back and referee, uh, kids who get involved through the National Honor Society or Student Council, uh, and it's just gotten to be part of the Tamanin culture over the years. Yeah, absolutely amazing. You know, it, it, it takes a village and we're talking about, okay, the basketball tournament being one day, but so much goes into it. Um, Emily, you raised, an astounding half a million dollars to benefit our families who are caregiving for a child with a serious illness or disability or catastrophic injury. So what makes the Taminen community, which includes students, faculty, and parents, it's so uniquely special. Um, what sets you apart? Tell me what makes it a culture of giving back to community. Well, I really think to piggyback off of what Jeff was saying, the fact that we're in our 21st year of this amazing partnership that we feel so lucky to be a part of. Um, and it is truly just, it is part part of our school culture now. It is part of what we do at Tamman and it's kind of like in our blood. Um, and it's, and besides the students and the parents and the teachers, it's, alumni come back. I mean, we have student, you know, alumni that are in college and out of college that still come back to help out with the scores table where Jeff is. Um, and we have high school kids who are in high school now who come back and volunteer. Um, and then our own families, the Tamman and teachers and staff are our families. It's part of their lives as well. All of our children have grown up coming to Taminen for Kellyanne Dolan on a Saturday in February. And it's really just become part of what we do. And so I think it's, uh, and it's like every year it's a reunion. Um, so it's, it's one of the happiest, um, it's exhausting and happy at the same time. It's just a happy, happy day. It's a big reunion of a bunch of Taminen tigers. <laughs> Tamman and Tigers, and I know it's amazing. Past principals come and join in that day. Students who are now, you know, parents of their own, and some of them teachers, to see them back in the forefront, you know, is just incredible. Um, John, I'm kind of wondering, Emily kind of referenced it really, you know, in my four years with the Dolan Fund, it's such a culture of compassion and paying it forward and giving it back. And I know that is something um, that as a faculty member that you guys weave in day in and day out. Uh, what do you think the takeaway is for the student? You know, at, at school, we, we spend so much time teaching academic skills and academic content, but it's also so vitally important that, um, that we teach character and that we teach empathy and that we teach community service. And the Kellyanne Dolan 
memorial fund, the event, the fundraiser that we hold here is one of really the major way that we teach that sort of character building to our kids. One of the many ways that we do at Tamman. Um, kids don't just, they don't dive into it because they love basketball. Uh, right. They dive into it because it is scientifically proven that giving back and showing gratitude and serving others uh, makes individuals happier and more fulfilled. And, and this event is um, one of the ways that we teach that sort of fulfillment and service to, to middle school kids. Yeah, that's, you know, amazing. I mean, you ingrain that sense of character in them and looking beyond the four walls and their own homes um, and maybe their economic circumstances and, and intrinsically what it feels to like give back to, to someone else. I'm curious if we flip the script, what have the kids, I mean, I'm going to ask each of you this, what have over the years the kids taught you um, or you've learned about compassion through their eyes? Uh, I'll go first. Uh, I think it, it's been incredible to uh, witness how creative kids can be uh, in what they put together, whether it's uh, a, a uniform that they, they put together that's a tribute to, uh, to Kellyanne, uh, or if it's a fundraising idea uh, that helps to bring in money in a way that we've never seen before. I just think uh, you know, at times you hear negative stuff about kids and what they do, and, and this is just such a positive thing uh, that to, to see them use their, their creativity and their resources to think outside the box uh, and to do good for other people uh, that has been so consistently eye-opening for me. Yeah, I would add to that that I think middle schoolers in particular get a bad rap. Um, it's it's a tough it's a tough age, um, but they are so eager to help other people. Um, so whether it's the tiniest little mundane task that we as a committee need help with, oh, can you go work at the coat check or can you go check with Mr. Klein to see if he needs water or you know, whatever it is, yeah. they want to help. Um, they want to be a part of it. And I think um, because of their age, they, they do want to feel part of something and, and giving back is just, you know, makes them want to be a part of it even more. Awesome. For me, I think it is that uh, compassion is is universal, um, part of that human nature that's universal across all kids. Because when you show up that day and walk through the halls of of and actually take note of what kids are here, um, it's not just the kids you would expect to be here. You know, it's not just the kids who are always involved in all of the school activities. It's it's also you might see a kid who. Um, maybe is less academically oriented, or maybe you didn't realize a kid had really a close connection to this school, or maybe it's a kid who sometimes gets in trouble somewhat, but those kids also sometimes are here all day for eight hours, um, just being part of what's going on. And it really clicks that um, what we do here and what this service does, um, it's not just the kids that are typically involved in all aspects of the school, it really hooks all of the kids. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. It's just really, kind of a, a, a universal culture. When we talk about the framework though, in, in terms of the actual events throughout the year that lead up to the tournament, I mean, it's not, I think you're a true model in that this is not about solicitation. You're really asking kids to be innovative and creative in how they are raising funds. It's not hitting up mom and dad. You know, it, it's, you know, are we having a car wash, a bake sale? Are we designing a card that has, you know, the Dolan Front butterfly for holidays this year, collecting items for raffle baskets, you know? So, you know, it leads us to, um, you know, this is a unique year. It's impacted, you know, all of us. Um, we squeaked the basketball tournament in, didn't we? Right before, what w is unimaginable really yeah. two weeks before the world really shut down so yeah. let's talk about just this year a little bit how is covid really impacting you know our ability to to do what we regularly do well unfortunately we weren't able to do some of the things that we typically do like we weren't able to have our assembly where mrs dolan speaks to our student body uh when we first come back from the winter break uh, and we're we're not able to have the tournament, uh, the, the Kelly and Dolan Memorial Fund Day, uh, like we typically do. Uh, but we want to uh, continue our our fundraising efforts. 
Um, and we may not be able to do what we do in a typical year, uh, but hopefully we're able to uh, still provide a, a good amount. So we've had, uh, we've partnered with our, our English department. Uh, they've done many letter writing lessons uh, within their classes and the kids are sending letters out to uh, friends and family members in the hopes that people can give, uh, if they're able, uh, what they can uh, in support of, of a great cause. So we have that. And then uh, we also are planning a trivia night, which we just confirmed for the 25th of March. So nice. we're going to tie that into uh, hopefully people going and get dinner at Moe's, which is a long time uh, mm -hmm. local restaurant who uh, have, they've been very, very supportive awesome. of us. Um, and then we're going to do uh, a, a trivia night that will feature a bunch of uh, basket drawings. So we're in the middle of collecting things like uh, AirPods and we have a TV that's going to be going. And so we're going to be marketing that uh, over the next couple of weeks in the hopes that we can uh, bring in a good amount for the fund. It's amazing. You're just back live five days a week. You're just juggling hybrid all year. And there's so many reasons to say, hey, guys, we love you, but it's just not in the cards for this year. But you pivoted like we all have done when we believe in something and we want to continue to support. And it, it just amazing, you know, in that sense. The raffle baskets, I want to kind of hit up that question. And I know, uh, Emily, it takes a committee and many <laughs> members, but every year those raffle baskets, they bring in a lot of money. What's your magic secret? Where, where, where are you delivering getting all that great goods? Well, I think the number one resource we have is our incredible staff here at Tamanand. Um, all of the teachers contribute a lot um, to the um, to the raffle baskets. And um, actually, a, a little bit goes a long way, as we know. If everybody contributes a little bit, it all adds up. And so the seventh grade, we have teams here at Tamanand. So there are two seventh grade teams, two eighth grade teams, and then the ninth grade team. Um, each team puts together a basket. Um, they, we asked the students, what are some things that you would like to win that you did, you know, that, that you wouldn't buy for yourself or your parents won't buy for you. Maybe we can raise the money and, uh, and have that raffled off. And we've had a lot of local businesses as well that have been really generous and, uh, made some donations. And then those alumni and our families who have also just become a part of this entire event, they've been really generous to help us with these raffle baskets. That's amazing. I think uh, it was last year, there were those wicked tickets that everybody was bidding on that just brought in a ton. And, you know, I've been on the end of a special event. I know what it takes to kind of leverage the hard work behind that. So we're so appreciative of you. Um, this event would not be possible, you know, without the loss of a, a very special girl and her parents who, um, chose to really view how she lived her life as a beacon of light um, for others. So I wanted to give you all the opportunity. Let's just talk about Peggy for a second. What does Peggy Dolan mean to the Tamanin community? Yeah, she's the star of the show. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've said for many years that uh, I don't think I've ever met anybody who can address anywhere between 800 and 1,000 middle school students in an auditorium and have that auditorium be completely silent. Um, she is able to uh, relay her family's story um, and in a way that, that I, I just haven't seen before. And she um, harnesses the respect and attention of, of all of our kids uh, and, and she's able to teach them lessons that, that they don't get uh, in a classroom. And, you know, to what John said and Emily said earlier, I mean, those are, you know, those, those lessons that, that she is able to impart on the kids are things that, um, that they're invaluable. And like I said, they're just not, uh, just not taught in classrooms. They have to, it has to be done in a different way. And she's able to do that. Yeah. And, and also it's in, I think the way that Peggy, it, impacts us not just our kids but us as individuals um you know it's amazing that uh every time peggy comes back to tamanin 
she knows all of our names. She knows our family members' names because our family comes here. She's asking about how people's kids are doing. She knows them by name. Um, she's just so connected to people. Um, and our kids obviously have a huge connection to her when, when she speaks, but um, it, we do as well. And, and it's because she takes the time to know so many important details about people um, because she connects to people. That's just what she does. Yes, definitely. She has a gift and she is seriously like a rock star on the day of our event. <laughs> um, she can't move two feet without somebody wanting to take a picture of her or with her. And um, she sits in that cafeteria with the karaoke going on and she will talk to everyone. <laughs> she, she's more patient than we are about that. Um, but she will, she'll, she watches the bat. I mean, she knows alumni names. She knows everybody. As John was saying, she is the epitome of a people person and everyone wants to work with her and help her and help this this organization because of her. That's wonderful. You know, one of my favorite years uh, was sitting in the bleachers with Peggy and Jeff's mom, because you talk about <laughs> another unsung hero uh, and a good friend of Peggy and what she does behind the scenes um, every year, not just in conjunction with the basketball tournament, but supporting um, the families of the Dolan Fund. So it's so great when she's able to attend. And there's not a year after that assembly that I don't recall a student making time after coming up to Peggy and saying, what you said today really touched me. It really made me think. It made me think about others and their struggle and how I can take the time out. So I think you guys really just captured the essence of Peggy um, mm -hmm. in a nutshell. So thank you for sharing those, those memories. Um, we had our 20th celebration last year and in conjunction with that, we unveiled a, a very special mural, which I enjoyed coming in the summer and helping paint with uh, the students, but Emily, tell me a little bit about the backstory on that mural and how it came to be. Well, this is my time to embarrass Jeff a little bit. Um, <laughs> Jeff uh, was honored, a much deserved honor, for being an unsung hero in, the, in schools by the Council for the Advancement of Public Schools. Um, the initials are CAPS, um, and he was awarded the, a grant as being an unsung hero, somebody who's not necessarily in, in the classroom, but behind the scenes doing amazing things. And he um, got this award and part of the award was a grant. And he decided to use the grant money um, to help fund this mural as a way to honor past participants for the last, you know, at that time it was 19 years. And just as a constant reminder that this is part of our community and just to encourage future involvement, to keep it going. And so um, that's how it came to be. And students helped and um, everybody, a lot of people got to contribute and work on it. And it's no offense, Jeff, as the basketball coach, but I think it's my favorite part of the gym. <laughs> um, it, um, it's just, I think it just captures, it captures Tamman and, and it captures the, um, our spirit with our, and the part, partnership with the Kelly and Dolan Memorial Fund. And it was designed based on t-shirts and the logo and, you know, to kind of taking all sorts of ideas that the kids, the kids design the t-shirts each year. So this is really a hodgepodge of all of um, the best features of some of our t-shirt designs over the years. Yeah, man, you, you you snuck it all in, and and I was going to give Jeff that question, but I knew <laughs> he wasn't going to want to talk about it. But let's let, let's talk about you know the Biden's counselor behind the scenes, um, especially during this difficult year when we know that kids um, you know have struggled with a lot, and he wins a little bit of money, and he says, "Hey, I want to do this mural. Let's let's sink, sink my award into this." and captured all the elements, the, the past t-shirts, the jelly beans even make it into that mural. And you had no problem getting a group of students literally to come in the week after school ended, the first week of summer vacation, 
it just speaks to the dedication um, and the spirit. So just absolutely love it, love it. Okay, I'm not letting John off the hook because, you know, he seems to be behind the scenes and there's a lot of fun actors that, that you know, play into. This is not about showing up on a Saturday. There are many different events that raise money. Um, tell me, I just, I, I just got the sense that you are really uh, the faculty prankster, maybe, or at least you were back in the high school or your college days. Um, what, how that plays into it? Uh, we, we like to have fun. Yes, that's the way I, I enjoy to phrase it. Um, you know, over the years, a lot of a lot of us as teachers have gone through a little bit of embarrassment uh, or or abuse or otherwise put out. We'd say in in the name of charity, maybe it's you know. Uh, taking pies in the face, the hands of students. Uh, one year, the male teachers could not shave for four months uh, without, <laughs> much, much to the chagrin of our of our wives, uh, without paying a cash donation as a penalty. Um, so there are a lot of raggedy looking male teachers that year. But uh, some fundraisers are a little more grueling than others. Uh, but raising money is raising money, uh, and and all does the same amount of good in the end. Yeah, that's great. It's all all in the spirit of raising money. So we appreciate you, you know your willingness to go the extra mile there. We're looking at a picture now of uh, the committee. Um, I think at last year's event, just wonderful um, group of folks that I've enjoyed getting to know over the years. Um, there's one thing I want to kind of hit on a serious note before we close up a little bit. In a little bit, um, you know, at the Dolan Fund. We're, we're talking a lot about um, inclusion, especially when we're talking about someone who's living with a disability and finding their voice and using their gifts in a, in a unique way. Um, not everybody is a basketball player or has that kind of talent. And what always has impressed me um, is the range. You, you don't have to be good at basketball if you wanna participate. But there are so many other ways to be involved and feel like you are part of the success of the event. Just give me a couple, you know, different ways kids can be involved other than playing. Uh, I, I think I think one of the, the neat things is how many different kids this involves in different ways. Um, so we have uh, actually we have a number of students who are in our autistic support program who were involved in making buttons that were part of a fundraiser for a, a couple years ago. Um, so we have that, we have our technology and art classes who are involved in certain things. It is very much a um, kind of a, a comprehensive uh, project when you talk about all the different kids who get involved. Um, but speaking to your point about inclusivity, uh, one of my favorite memories is uh, a couple years ago, it did have to do with playing basketball, although the student who I'm thinking of was not a basketball player, but a couple of our, our students embraced this young man yes. and um, had him on their team. And that student uh, who had some special needs scored a basket in the game uh, that he was playing. And it was relatively early in the day, but at a time where there were multiple grade levels kind of overlapping. So there were a lot of people there and the gym absolutely erupted when yes. this young man scored a basket. And I will forever remember Seamus and his teammates mm -hmm. and, and that moment, because I thought it spoke volumes about just what that inclusivity is all about. Yeah, it, that was such a privilege to witness. I remember that. And I remember also his joy in getting his picture taken with Bob Kelly when Bob <laughs> came out from Fox for the pep rally. And, you know, that that's what I love about you just create um, a safe space for anyone to be, you know, part of the success of the event, which is just incredible. Um, we're kind of running out of time. I just want to really thank all of you for taking time um, out of your day. It's been such a, a privilege to showcase and at least see you virtually. You know, mm -hmm. we, we miss you and look forward to when we can get back to our basketball tournament days. Um, so thank you, John and Emily and Jeff. And please, um, anybody who's out there watching us um, today, um, follow us. Follow us on Facebook, 
Kellyanne Dolan Memorial Fund or Instagram at Dolan Fund. Click live notifications, um, share with your friends. Super excited next week, shining a light, our beloved founder, um, conversations with Peggy. And we've got a couple surprise guests for her next week. So have a great day, everyone.